Good morning, Westside. Happy 2021. Glad you're here. My name is David Daly. I'm the community pastor here at Westside, and we're so glad to celebrate the first Sunday of the year. Together, we made it. 2020 is behind us. 21 is ahead. Yes, if you're going to do it, let's do it. Um, we have no idea what this year holds. We learned that last year, right? No idea what this year holds, but we can hold on to the fact that God is always faithful. And we can look back and see his faithfulness last year and in the years past. And so we can hold to that faithfulness looking forward into 2021 together. So would you stand with me as we prepare to worship? Home churches, would you receive this blessing um, as we listen to Psalm 117 over us and enter into our time of worship together? Psalm 117 says, Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his love toward us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Father, we, we worship you. And we step into this new year and new season under the banner of Jesus as your people. And in that, God, is our confidence for what lies ahead. We trust in your name. We trust in your faithfulness. We hold on to your love. May we walk into that and the fullness of it in 2021. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, let's worship. My eyes on your faithfulness Oh God, let me not forget To sing in the valley To look toward your goodness My heart set on who you are You're the light that consumes the dark joy and the strength to lift up my hands and sing. I enter the gates. I enter the gates with nothing but thanks. I want to magnify your worth. want to bring you more than words. I enter the gates. Come reckless with praise. I bring a heart that wants you first. All for your glory. with praise I'll bring a heart that wants you first all 
better excuse to start fresh than a new year, yeah? I mean, we can do it any day, right, of the year, but there's just something about the new year that gives us the excuse <laughs> to start new, to start fresh. And this song is basically declaring Jesus as our one and only, our one desire, the one in whom our soul delights. And so I encourage you this morning with the fresh, clean slate to once again declare that Jesus is our one and only. There's no one else for us but him. And let's sing it from a place of authenticity from the bottom of our hearts. Maybe you're not there this morning. I'm not there some days too. It's okay to sing in faith and it's okay to ask for faith to sing, say, Jesus, maybe I don't want you the most. Can you help me want you the most? But I encourage you, let's make this our New Year's declaration today.
We're going to continue our worship through our giving this morning. It's such an honor and privilege to be able to partner with the kingdom of God in this way. And again, what better excuse than a new year? (laughs) So let's choose to be a generous people today, to sow into the kingdom of God with little, with much, whatever you've got, because he's worthy of every part of us. Let's pray. Well, Jesus, again, we just love you. We thank you for who you are. And God, we thank you for how you work. We thank you, Jesus, that you can take the little that we have and cause it to go so far, to meet many needs, to show your love, Jesus, to a community who's in desperate need of a Savior. So we give to you this morning with cheerful hearts, God, excited to partner with you in this way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, hey, everybody, it's great to see you. Happy New Year to you and to your friends, your family. Uh, we have, there was a lot of celebrating on my block on Thursday night, a uh, loud celebration. Uh, I think people were, you know, typically we celebrate the, the beginning of a new year. I think it was celebrating the end of the hardest year of our lives as a society, I think. Um, as a church, we decided the best way to start 2021 is through something that you're going to be so excited about, a time of prayer and fasting, 21 days of prayer and fasting. You're like, what? Prayer and fasting? Yes. Maybe you've never fasted before, and I'm going to kind of talk to you a little bit about what that is and why we do this. And, um, and the reason why we decided to take 20, the first 21 days, these 21 days of 2021 to pray and fast is, believe, is because we believe that prayer changes things. Prayer changes things. Specifically, prayer changes me, and it changes you. And I don't know about you, but I need a fresh change of heart and perspective as 2021 launches. Um, 2020 produced um, some calluses in all of us, some cynicism, some bitterness, some brokenness, some, some just hardships. And this is a moment for us to hit the reset button. And the way we do that from a Christian perspective is through times of prayer, time spent with God in his presence. Um, this last year also revealed that, that the world has a control over us. There's, there, the world has a bit of a control over us that we need to break. Um, what governments do, what social media proclaims, what the media chooses to report or not to report. We've allowed so many things to distract us and to steal our attention and ultimately our joy in Jesus. And we need to return to our first love. We need to return to the foundation of our lives. We need to make space for God again to move in us and through us. So we're joining our Foursquare family all over, uh, all over the world uh, for 21 days of prayer and fasting to see God's face, to hear his voice, to discern the new things that he wants to do in us and through us this coming year. And we need this moment. You need this moment to unite our hearts and minds toward Christ together, but also to reset our perspective back on him and what he wants to do. We have some resources that you can download. You can uh, check out on uh, westsidechurch.org slash 21 days. There's a prayer guide that will lead you through each uh, uh, day of uh, prayer focus, as well as our daily devotions that we'll be doing. And so uh, check that out. You can download that and follow along starting tomorrow. Now, now I imagine for many of us, fasting is a foreign concept, not one that you look forward to. Maybe you're familiar with it in terms of health reasons, intermittent fasting, different things that are out there. But what about fasting for spiritual reasons? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about fasting to reconnect yourself with God? The Bible actually contains over 50 references to fasting. And what we learn through these passages is that fasting is not primarily about getting God to change something. It's about getting us to change. It's not about getting, trying to get, change God's mind or trying to convince him, look how serious I am, God, I'm fasting. <laughs> you know, it's not about that. It's about, well, you'll find out, if you fast with me, you'll find out that this, it changes you from the inside out. It changes your perspective. It resets uh, your heart and relationship back with God. Now, there are spiritual barriers all around us. And fasting breaks these barriers in our lives. It tells our bodies that they're not in charge. Think about that for a minute. Do you realize how much we are controlled by the flesh? Now, I know that sounds religious, but think about it. Go, just go one or two days without food, which I am gonna ask you to do. Go one or two days without food and you will quickly realize how much your body is in charge. <laughs> Suzanne and I started our fast on Friday and, and this will probably be the only time I mention that, but I wanna mention it because it's so hard. <laughs> I... I didn't realize how many food commercials there are on television, especially during football games. Oh my gosh. It's just, and it's, and that Pad Thai, stupid Pad Thai commercial. Has anybody seen that thing? Oh my gosh, it's so dumb. Anyways, there's food all around us. There's, and there's things like beckoning for our attention. And I'm like, I, it's, just, it's just so hard. And I realized one day in, okay, one hour into my fast, I wasn't even hungry. And my body was already starting to tell me, you're not in charge. That's, con that's concerning, to be honest. 
Because if it's something as simple as food that we are so dependent on, imagine the other things that can steal our attention and rob us of our devotion to God. So when we stop doing something for a few days, you quickly begin to see whether or not it has control over you. Maybe you wanna fast social media in, instead of food, or maybe you're, you wanna fast your phone, you just put your phone away. I mean, can you imagine? <laughs> People are gonna be having withdrawals all over Ben, Mike. I mean, they're gonna be having withdrawals all over Ben from the things that we're gonna fast from over these 21 days. Video games, for some of those younger people or young at heart, I'll share a story in just a minute about that. Um, watching the news, maybe you need to fast from watching the news for 21 days. Uh, maybe it is eating, maybe it's drinking. F- figure out what it is to fast, but you'll begin to realize when you start that fast, whatever it is that you decide, I'm, I'm going to go without for 21 days, you're going to realize that it has some control over you and that God wants to break the, those things in our lives and he wants to restore him as the rightful kind of first place in our lives. Well, Paul, the apostle Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verse 24. Um, he writes these words, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. And this is how you win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it, we discipline our bodies for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body. See, it's not just about disciplining your soul or your spirit. It's about disciplining your body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. There's, there's, Paul is making a connection between our body and our spiritual lives. Who is in charge? Now, I enjoy video games. I always have. Ever since I was a kid, I grew up, I, I'm in that generation where video games were invented, I think. And, um, and so I grew up playing them and I love them. But because I'm so competitive, these video games that I've played have negatively impacted my relationship, particularly with my sons, who are also very competitive, but they get that from their mom, not from me. <laughs> but I'll, I found that I, I, will, I will get mad at them when they beat me, <laughs> like the, I, will, I will discipline them when they beat me at games. I mean, it's really bad, you guys. I'm telling you. So I've decided I need to fast from video games. I decided this several years ago. I don't play video games except twice a year during a one-week vacation each time, and I binge hard on video games during those weeks, and that's it. I, don't, I just fast it, like, consistently, because it, it affects, I've realized that it has control over me, and, you know, and so I just decided I'm, I'm going to fast that. Um, now, Paul connects this idea, like discipline, saying no to some things, so you can say yes to other things, saying no to things that get in the way, that have the potential of getting in the way between our relationship with God and others. Now, all of us, including myself, have experienced times where God seems distant, and out of reach, and that, he, that, that we can't hear his voice, and we wonder if he even hears our prayers. And fasting and prayer, like nothing else, moves us back into intimacy with Jesus. Jesus talked about fasting in Matthew chapter 9, verse 14. Um, he, he discusses this. There's some, some people are, um, some religious people are saying, hey, your, your disciples aren't fasting. And he responds to that. And so in verse 14 of chapter nine, one day the disciples of John the Baptist came to Jesus and asked him, why don't your disciples fast like we do and the Pharisees do? And Jesus replied, do wedding guests mourn while celebrating with the groom? Of course not, but someday the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. And so Jesus isn't with us in the flesh. He's not walking with us in the streets. He's not, he's not carrying our burdens, you know, pr- like practically, tangibly, like right now. He's not with us. He's in heaven at the right hand of the Father. And this is a moment, because of his distance in proximity and physicality, fasting moves us into his presence where we, where we sense a renewed sense of his goodness, of his grace, of his power, of his, of his presence surrounding us. Fasting will move us into that. It will get rid of some other distractions and will move us into, um, into his presence like nothing else. It tells our bodies and our souls that, that we are dependent not on food, not on accolades, not on what this world can offer, We are dependent on God 
for everything. And I love it. in the same section of scripture, Jesus, how Jesus connects fasting with the new things that God wants to do in our lives. Verse 16, besides, who would patch old clothing with new cloth? For the new patch would shrink and rip away from the old cloth, leaving an even bigger tear than before. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. So what he's doing is he's connecting this idea with fasting that when, when, when Jesus isn't with us in the flesh, he's connecting this idea with fasting, of fasting with this idea of new wine into, into new wine skins. For the old skins would burst from the pressure, spilling the wine and ruin the skins. New wine is stored in new wine skins so that both are preserved. See, what fasting does is it sets the reset button for the new things that God wants to do. It opens up our hearts to receive the new wine of his spirit and what he wants to do in this day. It sets us up to receive and to distribute this new wine this, this, the, of God's presence and his goodness and his love and his grace and what he's doing, what he wants to do in this world. Fasting opens our, our hearts to this. And so as we focus in our, our devotionals through these 21 days, it's gonna be on all things new, how God wants to create new things through our lives, what he wants to do in our lives personally, what he wants to do in our, our church and our community, what's he, what he wants to do in our world. So we're gonna fast to reconnect with God and to be renewed by his spirit. Now, some of you might be wondering, well, how do we fast? There's no rule. So um, you just need to ask the Lord and yourself and the people around you, like, do it together and decide. And people in your home church, ask, just kind of do it together. Walk with someone through this fast. And because there's no rule, there's no hard and fast where you have to do this, you know, this way or that way. You can fast anything and you can ease into it. You know, you, you, you don't have to go cold turkey on not eating turkey. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to like just say, I'm, 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 not, gonna, I'm not gonna eat or drink anything. You know, that may not actually be good for you. Um, but what will you fast? Determine that between yourself, God, your relationships, maybe one meal a day or, or choose something other than food. You decide that. But regardless, what you want to do is you want, your allow, you want to allow your spirit person to be in charge. Because whatever you decide to fast will fight back. It, it, this world doesn't want you to let go of it. Whatever, whatever you decide to fast, it will, want, it will want to hang on. Just the fact that you're saying no to something, the, the way the world works, it's going to fight for attention. And so let your spirit person be in charge. Let, let it be a work of the spirit, not, um, not a work of your flesh. Don't, don't try to self-will yourself into this. Just submit yourself to what you believe God is asking you to fast during these 21 days and go for it. Day by day, one day at a time. And if, if you don't do it every day, just pick it up the next day. Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you to obey him one day at a time. What helps me now in planning um, out my days is that I don't wanna be too idle during times of fasting. <laughs> Why is that? Because chips and salsa love idle time. They, they cry out during those moments where I'm sitting on the couch with the, nothing else going on. They call out to me, eat me. I'm right here for you. <laughs> so I intentionally spend more time uh, doing things, reading my Bible, taking walks, um, listening. I'm listening to a few books during these 21 days that I've been wanting to read. So, so the point is, is don't, don't just like, you know, Fasting and idleness don't necessarily go together. Sometimes we think that's the way we're supposed to do it. But I found in my own life that fasting is easier if I, if I have a schedule and I kind of know what I'm gonna be doing during the day and I, and, and, and I have specific time where I'm seeking God's face and I'm praying and I'm, and I'm reading the word. Um, the key is, is to have a devoted time of prayer and fasting during these days to intentionally give yourself to those things. Um, and it's not just about self-denial, by the way. It's not, you know, self-flagellation is not a spiritual discipline, but it's about being intentional with your time and your thoughts and saying to yourself, your body and the things around you, you're not in charge. So maybe plan your year, start exercising. Work is it's getting worse, isn't it? I asked you to fast, now I'm asking you to exercise. Work on relationships with others, with God. Um, tomorrow I share uh, in our daily devotionals, I share uh, from a passage in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 11, which reads, and I will give them, this is God speaking through the prophet Ezekiel, I will give them singleness of heart and put a new spirit within them. 
I will take away their stony, stubborn heart and give them a tender, responsive heart. So they will obey my decrees and my regulations. Then they will truly be my people and I will be their God. I imagine many of you like me and are like me and after the year that we've had, you, we need a singleness of heart. We need, we need to return to our first love. We need to come back to God as the single most important person in our lives. We need a new spirit. The cynicism and the, the, the frustration, the anger, the weariness, the fearfulness that seems to be pervasive in the church right now needs to go away. But there's no way to just, to just you know, snap your fingers and for it to be gone. It will take discipline for us to seek God's face and return to our first love and sit in his presence long enough for him to change our hearts and our minds to be transformed. Because being callous and being frustrated and being angry is not God's heart for us. He desires that we have a tender and responsive heart to him so that we can obey him and walk in his ways where we live in simple obedience to his way, to his word, in intimacy with him, in connection with him. And I'm not saying this is easy to come by. It's not. Fasting and prayer and focused time like this is not easy, but would you join me in it? Would you say yes to 21 days of saying no to something in your life so you can say yes to the new things that God wants to do this year in your life. And as you do that, I want, I want to ask you to, I'm gonna ask you to ask God for four things and I'm gonna put these on the screen. I'm not gonna spend any time on them. I'm just gonna read them and I want you to, um, you can, you can um, come back to them later online or you can write them down now. But these four things I want you to ask God this week. I want you to ask him to give you a tender and responsive heart and walk in the grace, joy, and deliverance he has for you. I want you to ask God to illuminate to you any limiting beliefs or areas of confirmation bias or internal narratives that do not align with God's word. I want you to ask God for renewed strength, elevated perspective, and courage to rise above present circumstances. And I want you to ask God for spiritual eyes and ears to see and hear beyond the physical and the audible. Let me finish. It's probably a surprise to most of you that Suzanne and I experience conflict. <laughs> uh, we fight um, as every couple does. We, um, we are both stubborn and strong-willed and have strong ideas. And we've been married for um, 27 years. Yeah, 27 years. I'm still questioning that right now even, oh my gosh, 27 years. And, um, and we've, our marriage has thrived and grown through all of the challenges that we have and the, through the personality differences and everything because we are willing to pray. I know that sounds so cliche and so religious or whatever, and I, I'm, but I'm telling you, prayer has changed our marriage. And I say that because, it's not because um, I pray that God will change Suzanne. Um, I have prayed that prayer on many occasions. Um, or Suzanne praying that God will change me. She has also prayed that prayer on many occasions. But as we begin to seek God's face and pray well, what happens is we change. I change. She changes. Each of us change as we seek God's face, as we pursue his purpose for our own lives. We begin to become more and more like Jesus the more time that we spend in his presence. I think it's very possible that the church today is anemic. Even the way that we've responded to the different things in our world this past year tells me that we haven't spent enough time 
in intimate connection with Christ. And so it's time. It's time for us to change that narrative. It's time for us to spend time in his presence again, to let this year be launched, not through more activity and more, um, even more Bible reading. It's to simply be in God's presence, to spend time with him, seeking his face, finding a space in your house or in the city where you live, wherever, just finding a quiet place that you can reflect on God and ask him to be part of your life and to listen for his voice and to spend, to tarry in those places longer than you normally would. And this isn't to lay some kind of a guilt trip on anybody. Listen, this, we're all very busy and we all have families and lives and things we gotta do, I get that. But if we want the narrative of our nation and our church and our lives to be different than what it was in 2020, then we have to do something different than what we've done in 2020. We need to spend time with God again. Prayer and fasting changes us. It opens the door for God to do a new and fresh work in our lives. It tells our bodies that they are not in charge. It changes our perspectives about life, about world, our world, about relationships. My father-in-law, uh, Cliff Murray, some of you know him. He's, a, he's been a pastor for 50 plus years. And um, he has a growing and intimate relationship with Jesus. It's inspiring to, to just watch my father-in-law live out his walk with God. And he's been praying a specific prayer for many, many years that I'm praying right now. I'm praying this for myself, and I'm also praying this for you. And I would ask you to pray it out loud with me today as well. It's a simple prayer. You can memorize it today, actually. You can walk away and just keep re just repeating this over and over in your soul and your spirit throughout these 21 days of fasting. It's Holy Spirit. Speak to my heart and change my life. Holy Spirit, speak to my heart and change my life. Would you say that out loud with me? Wherever you're at, with home churches or wherever you're at, just say this right now with me out loud. Holy Spirit, speak to my heart and change my life. Jesus, we need you. We need you to be at the center of our lives. We need you to be on the throne of our lives, body, soul, mind, and spirit. We need you to be in the center. So Jesus, we commit ourselves right now, we commit ourselves to returning to our first love. We commit ourselves to falling on our faces before you these next 21 days to say to you, even through our fasting, that you are Lord over all of our lives. And we are, Jesus, we are submitted to you. We are submitted to your way. We are submitted to your word. We are submitted to your spirit. And Lord, would you help us to walk out your way as we increasingly spend time in your presence and in prayer and in seeking your face. We love you, Jesus. We thank you that there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, that we can live free and we can live boldly and we can live with so much joy and grace in our lives because of what you've done for us. Jesus, we love you. And we thank you for your presence. In your name we pray, amen. Well, I love you all and uh, happy new year. May 2021 be the best year yet because of being in God's presence. Ha hope you have some great discussions in your home church and uh, we'll see you all next week.